Step one were the groups. Step two was to create the templates. So let's say you've got a fantastic template, you've got a nice group standing by, then you're going to send your e-shot out. And this is what the window looks like inside ACT. And this is a screenshot of the uh, email I sent out to the people who are on this webinar today. Basically, um, the, uh, if you look, travel down this dialog box, you can see, first of all, send to current contact. Now, when I'm testing my messages, and I'll test them five, six times before I send it out to my live group, um, so, you know, I'm on my record in ACT and I'll just send it to myself several times just to check to see what it looks like in Outlook. Uh, but lower down, you can see that I could send it to a lookup or I could send it to one of my groups. And then this is the template that I'm going to be sending. But I can come over to select template and choose a different one. But the last template that you were working on will appear in this window. So that's useful. You can preview it before you send it, just in case you have any issues. You might think, mm, what, what was that template? If there's a bit of a delay between you writing it and sending it, you can go back into edit it. And remember when I talked about importing HTML templates, this is where you'd import them, that button there. Now the subject line, this is really important. And people say you should spend as much time working on your subject line as you do on the copy. Um, so that's definitely worth, worth uh, thinking about how you're going to get people to open your messages. And the subject line is the starting point. Now this box here where it says personal message, you can add a personal message field to your template so that if you were just sending a one-off message to one of your clients or one of your contacts, you could type in a personal message and where that word test appears, that's where you could type in a message for them. So I find that quite useful, particularly when I'm talking to people about how powerful Swift Page is, I'll often send them a personal message and say, this is a typical template, what do you think? And then at the very bottom of this dialog box, you can see that I can share the content of my own email messages with my own Facebook page, with my Twitter account, with my LinkedIn profile. So that can be quite useful. I don't do that all of the time, but sometimes I will actually uh, or have it automatic set up by putting ticks in there that when I send that e-shot out, all my social media sites get updated at the same time. Then the other thing here, you can send now. Then if you've got one of the other accounts, not the basic account, if you've got one of the other Swift page accounts, you can schedule send, which means you can send at the best time for you. So if you were working very late at night, uh, but you didn't want to send it that time, you could plan to send it at, say, nine o'clock in the morning or whatever is the best time that you know for your particular audience. And that comes down to testing and measuring. And the other thing is you can send it as someone else if you've got multiple users in your Swift page account. So that is a lot in this dialog box, but I just wanted to show you all the different options there. And later on, I'll, I'll give you a live demonstration inside my own ACT database so you can see how that works in practice. So let's move on. So you've got the group, you've created the templates, you've sent out the eShot. Well, 24 hours later, you can click the little Sage um, ACT marketing cloud icon and get the results. So what you can see there is I have got 176 updates that I need to update my contact record with people who've opened email or opened emails, clicked on links. And what I would do is toggle all of those and submit that information so that all the records get updated. Uh, and that's something that you have to do where well, you need to do it regularly. Don't leave it too late because the results from your email campaigns are only kept on the Swift page servers for two months. 
So if you don't bring the results back into your own database, you're going to lose them. So I always recommend you do that. But you do have to wait 24 hours before you can uh, bring the results in.